Let's consider the acceleration of charges between parallel plates. So you'll recall with the parallel plates we would connect a battery to the plates. It would have a certain voltage and that would cause there to be an electric field. The electric field would point from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. And we get this uniform electric field inside the plates. So that that uniform electric field would push any charge, any positive charge, towards the negative plate in the same direction as the electric field. And you'll also recall that we were talking about the work done to move a charge from one potential to another. So we might have a charge here at point A that has a potential VA and we might do some work and move it to point B here where the potential is VB. And we said that the work done to move from point A to point B would be equal to the size of the charge times the voltage difference between A and B. It would be equal to Q times VB, in this case, the final potential minus the initial potential, which was A. Now, when we connect our battery over here, conductor will all be at the same potential. And in fact, usually we consider the negative side of the battery to be at zero potential. We usually say that VA here would be equal to zero volts. And the positive side of the battery, it's all going to be at one positive potential here. And so we could take our VB here to be equal to the voltage of the battery. And so the amount of work that would be need, needed to be done to move our positive charge against the field and get it to the other plate, taking any, any path, is going to be this expression here again. And then, of course, how much electric potential energy will be gained? Well, it's going to be the same as the work. So the change or the increase in electric potential energy as we move from one plate to the other will be equal to Q times the voltage across the plates, delta V. Now, if we did all that work and we got our positive charge here against the positive plate, then we could release that charge and of course it would gain kinetic energy as it moved between the plates. How much kinetic energy would it gain? Well, whatever the loss in electric potential energy is equal to will equal the gain in kinetic energy. So we're going to be able to figure out how fast the charge is going to be going as it reaches the other plate. So as it loses potential, it will gain kinetic energy. And we can equate those to one another. So let's try that with the numerical example. So read over the question and try it for yourself. Come back for the answer. Okay, so what we'd like to do here, the idea will be that the loss in electric potential energy will equal the gain in kinetic energy. And our loss in electric potential energy will be the work required to move it from one plate to the other. It'll just be that Q times delta V. And delta KE, that's what I want to solve for in the first part of the problem. We're asked for the gain in kinetic energy. So delta KE is going to equal the size of the charge. Well, this is an alpha particle. And alpha particles have two protons in them. Of course, the neutrons have no charge. An alpha particle is just the nucleus of a helium atom, so it's a helium atom with the electrons ripped off. Uh, so the two protons, they each have an elementary charge. So our total charge there will be 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And of course we're accelerating it across 5,000 volts or 5,000 joules per coulomb. You notice here the coulombs will cancel out so we'll get a value, a value in joules for our kinetic energy. And if we multiply that out, we get a value of 8 times 10, 8.0 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. And then the second part of the question is to figure out what the velocity of the particle will be. Well, we know that uh, 
our change in kinetic energy will it started with zero kinetic energy so the kinetic energy will just be a half mv squared at the other side so we can say that 8.0 times 10 to the minus 16 joules is going to equal a half mv squared now for the mass of a uh, alpha particle it has four of these nucleons in it and all the nucleons have basically the same mass so it's going to have a total mass of 4 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and so we can equate this as 1 half 4 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 that's kilograms times v squared equals to this 8.0 times 10 to the minus 16. That's going to allow us to solve for V. I'll let you do the math there. You should get an answer that V is equal to 4.9 times 10 to the fifth. That's meters per second. Now, the idea of the parallel plate leads to something, a new unit for energy. And even though it uh, has the word volt in it, it's not a unit of potential, it's a unit of energy, so be a bit careful about that. So this electron volt, which uh, goes by the symbol EV, it's just the amount of kinetic energy gained by an electron if it's accelerated across exactly one volt. So if we make it one volt across our plates, the electron will accelerate across the plates and it will gain a kinetic energy equal to one electron volt. And that's how we define the electron volt. So an electron volt is equal to the energy gained when an electron is accelerated across one volt. Now, of course, how much energy is that in joules? Well, uh, we just saw that the change in electric potential energy as you accelerate across a given voltage is given by Q delta V. And of course the charge of an electron is this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and then we're accelerating it across one volt or one joule per coulomb so we get a result of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules is equal to one electron volt. That is the conversion factor. So if you know the charge of an electron you know the conversion factor between electron volts and joules. Now why do we introduce this extra complication? Uh, why do we introduce the idea of an electron volt and rather than just sticking with joules? Well, it's the same reason that we introduce the idea of kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours are also an energy unit and they're used for big energies. Joules are used for medium energies and electron volts are typically used for atomic energies. Turns out Atomic energies are of the order of electron volts. One electron volt, ten electron volts. Those are typical atomic energies. So, very quick question for you here. How much kinetic energy will an electron gain if accelerated across 367 volts? Hopefully you said right away, 376 electron volts. So, easy. Here's an IB question asking really the same thing. Uh, so an electron is accelerated through 100 volts, therefore it should gain 100 electron volts of energy. And so it's got to be one of these two. Um, which of the following gives the correct gain in kinetic energy of the electron in both joules and electron volts? Well, it's not very many joules. Remember, electron volts are very, very small units. So your correct answer has to be B here. And another question. Stop the video, read the question over, try it yourself, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so what we're going to do is separate the plates. Well, if you separate the plates, it's true that the electric field will be less. But the potential difference, that is the voltage, that's the delta V part, is kept the same. The work required, well, the work is equal to Q delta V. And being as Delta V isn't changing, and the charge isn't saying ch isn't changing. The work won't change either, and that means the work here, the correct answer will be A. It's the same amount of work, even though the electric field is smaller. Uh, as a, a bit of a side note, electric field inside 
the uh, plates will be given by the voltage across divided by the distance. So what happens here if we increase the distance between the plates, the electric field will become smaller. And so your work, which is going to equal the force times the distance, this force is going to be smaller because the electric field is smaller and the distance will be greater and the work will be the same. Another IB question. So once again, I'd like you to stop the video, read the question over, try it yourself, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so for this question, uh, do note that this is a positive charge, and that means that the potential at V1 is going to be higher than the potential at V2. In other words, this is your positive plate at a higher potential. This is your negative plate at a lower potential, and that's going to push the charge, the positive charge, to this side, and it's going to gain some kinetic energy as it does so. So kinetic energy gain, that's got to be a positive quantity, right? And that means if we're going to get positive value, we've got to go V1 minus V2. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.